Have you ever wanted to make your own personal AI assistant? You know, like Jarvis from Iron Man. Well, today, we are not just dreaming about it, we are building it right on our computer. Completely local and private. Forget cloud services, we can run it completely open source on your laptop. This is the project that's going to make our Jarvis dream a reality. It's called Local Talking LLM. And it's amazingly open source and combines some of the best AI tools out there. We are talking Whisper for speech to text, Olama for language model, and Chatterbox TTS for text to speech. This blog came out early in 2024, and today we are going to use it. And the way this works is this pipeline. So we input speech. So we talk to our computer through a microphone. OpenAI's Whisper converts this speech into text. And this text transcription is now passed to Olama via Langchain. And then Olama generates a response. And this generated response is then passed to Chatterbox TTS to synthesize speech as an audio output. And then we get to hear the output. So we input speech and we get output of speech from the computer. So here's the plan. First, we are going to clone this repository, set up our Python environment, and then configure the whole pipeline. Let's get started. Okay, my repository is cloned. I will use UV to initialize my project. If you don't have UV set up, uh, please go and set it up first. That would be helpful in following this further. Okay, so a PyTOML file already exists in this repository, so I don't need to initialize this project. Let me have a look at what this uh, PyTOML says and what version of Python is required. So in this case, it says I need a Python version of 3.11 or greater. And these are the dependencies that it needs to run this project. So let me set it up one by one. So I will create a Python environment with a Python version of 3.11 and activate that environment. And now that we have the Python version set up, I can just do UV sync and that should install all the packages and dependencies mentioned in this project. Okay, that was quick. I have UV set up. Now let's try to run this main file in this project and that should be the app.py. It, it's helpful for me to look at the code. So I have opened up my IDE. It's the new Vim IDE. If you like it and would like to use it, uh, you can set it up in using the video that I have. So this is the app.py. It takes these parameters. Uh, I can leave most of them as defaults, but what I would need to set is the model parameter depending on which Olama model I have available. And let's try that. So I need to activate my environment again in this ID and with that I have my IDE set up uh, can run UV run app and I need to set the model book before I do that let me check what Olama models I have available uh, we can do that using Olama list if you don't have Olama set up and you would like to learn about this Olama command line interface Please watch the other video which talks about it in quite detail, setting it up and using the CLI for uh, looking at these models, installing them, downloading them, and also how to use the REST API for any other projects. So check it out here. So these are the models that I have available uh, since it talks about Gamma 3. Maybe I can also use the Gamma 3 I have, which is a 4B model. So let me pass that in. So the flag that needs to be used is model and gamma 3 4b and 
it would take a while. Um, it needs to download uh, models required for Chatterbox and also download uh, Whisper, which is required for speech to text. Okay, you can see here that it's using the MPS device that is unified in the M1 Mac device and it's downloading these PyTorch files. I'm guessing these are uh, model files required for the chatterbox text-to-speech model. Alright, so now it has installed all the model files, the tokenizer that it requires and it tells us that it's using these following parameters for emotion exaggeration, CFG, weight, uh, you can ignore them, those are the defaults. But most importantly, we have the LLM model pointing to gamma 34B that we had passed in the command line. And the way to exit the script is using control C. And it gives us a prompt indicating that it's ready for us to input our speech. It's running. And all you have to do now is speak into the microphone. And the system we use whisper to transcribe the speech, send it to Gamma model, run on Olama for a response, and then use Chatterbox TTS to speak the answer back to you. Let's try it out. Hello, can you tell me something about Donald Trump? Okay, so it has correctly transcribed the speech and it's trying to generate the response using Olama gamma 3 model and what we can see in the activity monitor is is it when it's trying to generate the response this is the model from olama trying to generate the response you can see these spikes here in the um, gpu history on my m1 mac and once it's done generating, then it will... Certainly, Donald Trump was the 45th president of the United States. Okay, so that was a short and crisp response, and it's pretty direct, and I can use this as my virtual assistant. For anything I need, I can let it run in the background, and whenever I need something, I can just prompt it with some question, and then come back to see the answer. So let's try something different. Can you tell me about the M1 Max? What is it different from the normal Intel architecture? Okay, so it transcribed it correctly, but this is a question that I'm not sure if it has the answer to. It should, because M1 Max was released before the cutoff date of Gamma 3 models. And yeah, but I'm curious what it says about it. So let's wait and hear that. AI, the M1 Max, is Apple's powerful chip utilizing ARM architecture. It differs from Intel's x86. Okay, cool. So I did uh, correctly figure out that M1 Max that I'm talking about is the Apple's chip, not some other uh, thing. So it was able to figure out the relation and come back with a crisp and short response, I guess. The short response could be because of the system prompt here, which tells uh, the LLM to respond so less than 20 words. And if we change this, uh, probably it would give us a much longer response. But then again, it would take a bit more time to generate this response. Now uh, we can try it out. So I made it 200 words, so it would take a long time to generate now, but let's just hear it. What's so different between the ARM architecture and the x86 architecture, and why is it powerful? Okay, so it's transcribed correctly, and now it goes to generate. So this would take some time since we increased the number of words to 200 words now. Let's see how long it takes. But the good thing is I can see the GPU being used here. So it is processing. 
AI, ARM uses energy efficiency and a risk design, while x86 is CISCs. This allows ARM to be powerful and efficient. Okay, I see that it's still using 20 words or less. I just realized that while I changed the file here and saved it, but I did not restart the server, so probably it's using the server with the system prompt that it had before. So I need to restart this. Let's do that. Control C ended this session and can restart it by running it again. Since we already downloaded this model once, it should not download this again. It should figure it out from the cache that is stored on your computer and pick it up from there. Okay, there are quite a few warnings, but for now you can ignore them. Uh, this project was built more than a year ago, so I can imagine there would be a lot of uh, components that have changed since then. Uh, deprecation warnings around different packages, but that's fine, at least it runs for now. Okay, so it's back up. Let's see if it can generate more than 20 words this time. Can you tell us why Apple likes to call its chip silicon? Okay, so it's off to generate now, and this time, let's see if it can generate more than 20 words. So while it's generating, maybe we can take a quick detour and talk about these flags that we can set or that you can use. Feel free to try it out. So exaggeration, which is defaulted at 0 0.5, you can choose any range between 0 and 1, and this would add exaggeration to the emotion while it speaks. And CFG weight is for the speed that it's uh, speaking. So if you want it to speak faster, you can make it higher uh, between 0 and 1. And this speech that you hear back from the um, application would be much faster. There is also a flag to save generated voice samples. Yeah, and also use your voice if you would like to clone it and ask the app to speak back in your voice. So these are things that okay, you could try. Let's explore why Apple uses the term silicon for its chips. It's largely a branding and historical choice. Originally, silicon was used to describe the material, silicon, that forms the foundation of most modern semiconductors. These semiconductors are the tiny building blocks of chips. Apple adopted the term to align with their overall brand identity, which emphasizes innovation, precision, and a connection to the fundamental components of technology. It subtly positions their chips as being at the core of their product. Furthermore, using silicon creates a feeling of quality and reliability, tying into Apple's reputation for premium products. Essentially, it's about more than just the hardware. It's about the image Apple wants to project. Okay, that's uh, fair enough. So silicon is the material used for semiconductors and all the chips that we use in modern day. And Apple probably wants to be known as the technology behind good semiconductors or powerful semiconductors. So makes sense, but good thing for us to note is it did generate more than 20 words this time. So you could tweak the system prompt the way you like. So right now it's prompted to be a helpful, friendly AI assistant and to provide concise responses. But if you like to play Dungeons and Dragons or if you want to use it for any role-playing setup, feel free to use it, tweak the system prompt, and I'm guessing it would respond to you in that way. And there you have it, your very own private local talking LLM or local Jarvis. You've just created a very powerful personal assistant right on your machine without sending any of your data to the cloud or to any of these big tech com companies. You can experiment with different models, with different parameters, and also see which ones you like best. This is just the beginning. Imagine the possibilities you could do just, just by using these. You could connect these to other services to control your smart home, schedule tasks, even write code with just your voice. If you enjoyed this, hit the like button, subscribe, and let me know in the comments what you would ask your personal Jarvis. Thanks for watching.